Ever since I was a child, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. People would say to me, oh, you could be OBGYN, you could be pediatrics, and I'm like, oh, yuck. I didn't know really what I wanted to do. And then after my time in medical school exposed me to the emergency department, that was just it. And that's how most people decide on ER. It just fits them, it's got the excitement, it's got the breadth and depth. You can't often put it any more into words. Emergency medicine is moving forward super fast, fast forward. I think the major advances affect how we deal with time-sensitive illness in the population. So things like sepsis, stroke, and acute heart attack were at the forefront of all the initial diagnostics. We set up the cath lab, call the cath lab, call the cardiologist, have to deal with the neurologist if there's an incoming stroke. And that is really a very important part of emergency medicine. The other important part is the global reach of the specialty. We have a global society called the International Federation of Emergency Medicine. And it probably has at least 60 member countries. And you would be surprised, today I met a young woman who is the under minister of health from Ethiopia. She is in charge of critical care and emergency care throughout the country of Ethiopia. So that's one example. She said the specialty has been in Ethiopia for 10 years. A few weeks ago, I met an emergency physician from Ghana. They are celebrating their 10th anniversary of emergency medicine as well. So those are some examples of the reaches of emergency medicine you would never even imagine. In the emergency department, and in general medicine in general, there are many venues to prepare medical students for the actual clinical environment. Things like flipped classrooms, lectures, reading, blogs and posts, they all work to really prepare the student for the clinical environment. The emergency department is really a team sport and you've got to play it on the field. So it's important to remember that at least even in good residencies and intense residencies, at least 80% of the time will be spent in the emergency department. And that's where the students are expected to learn. What do they learn? They learn to apply all of the things that they learned earlier in medical school. A simulation isn't a real patient. So the students have to learn clinical applications of what they learn. They have to learn decision making they have to learn judgment. And those are the things that you can only learn in the clinical environment. They also have to learn proper physician behaviors, how to approach the patient, how to get the patient's confidence, and how to proceed with the history and physical. When we're teaching medical students and residents, we have a lot of tips that we give them and a lot of behaviors that we try to teach them that will help their job. Remember that in the emergency department, it's, it's really pretty interesting. You have to gain the patient's confidence in about the first 30 seconds of your contact. Now, that's not going to happen if you're seeing an internist or even a surgeon and doing a pre-op evaluation where you have a lengthy discussion about what's going on. So emergency physicians typically develop or already have that innate method of establishing confidence and trust right away. How do we do this? If we're able to, we sit down and we don't stand with our arms crossed above the patient to kind of look superior or arrogant. And you look them in the eye and you spend a lot of time listening. And you learn how to sort of redirect them when they start talking about the illnesses they've had 20 years ago because you do need to know more about what's going on now. And I think all of those things, listening, respecting their issues, respecting their questions, going into detail about what's going on with the testing, how long it will take, that all is a way of expressing empathy and consideration for the patient and their family. A lot of times families around, they're going to be as interested in what's going on as the patient. 
These things are pretty universal in all of medicine. We've got to do it in a lot faster time and a lot quicker time. I often get asked, do we still need books? Of course, I'm sharing my knowledge primarily in the manner of a book, digital, print. The idea is that in any specialty, but especially in emergency medicine, the first thing you might ask is, well, what is it? What is the scope? What is the depth? What has to be covered? And the concrete example of a book makes it very clear. Thousands of pages. This is what we really have to know. So I think a book is really the cornerstone of education. Many of the other vehicles that we have, blogs, posts, big conferences where things are discussed, are a way to really amplify and increase our knowledge of certain things in a book. And remember, a book is organized. Certainly, blogs and posts are now, and digital media are, have become a major cornerstone in education. But they're little digital bits and pieces of stuff. So you have to learn the major stuff from a book, be it web-based or print, and then you can expand your knowledge or look at controversies as they're presented in blogs and posts. So they're really complementary methods of education and learning. I estimate that we have updated about 30% of the content of the book. A lot of the updates are with time-sensitive conditions, so stroke, heart attacks, sepsis, different infections. Remember that most of what we do in emergency medicine encompasses any complaint, any disorder throughout the body. So we have many other updates in kind of ordinary things. What do you do for abdominal pain? What are the newest methods of imaging? What are the newest methods of ultrasound? These are all complemented by videos which may show procedures, different techniques, and a lot of ultrasound techniques as well. In addition, we've expanded our pediatric section. One of the most popular specialties for pediatricians and emergency physicians is pediatric emergency medicine. We pretty much have an entire textbook devoted to pediatric emergency medicine in this edition. Another thing we've tried to add is it's rather amazing how there's little discussion about special considerations. Geriatrics is very important, disorders in women, pregnancy, what to worry about in lactation. We've tried to add sections in each chapter that pertain to these conditions. It takes a dedicated team of editors and authors to put together a book that you can trust in. And yes, you can. We have multiple levels of editing at least three levels of content editing until we put the final book together. Our goal is, if you're working in an ED, have a problem you need to read about, look up the treatment, look up the diagnostic parameters, this is it, and you can trust it for sure. The best way to learn from Access Emergency Medicine is to use it. There are a whole list of key textbooks, atlases, toxicology books, different handbooks about emergency medicine that are useful. They all have a different approach, a different clinical approach, and different ways of discussing different conditions. There's a multimedia section, so we have a lot of figures and a lot of tables and a lot of videos that show procedures. So the best way is to get used to it. The search mechanism is excellent, and you can search by textbook, you can search through the entire compendium, our entire library, uh, however you want, and you're going to find whatever you need. I think one of our advantages are tables, and I'm always working with the medical students and residents who might ask me certain things, and I'll say, look, I'll show you where this is, and I print up a table that's either got diagnostic features or treatment features that they were looking for. So you just need to learn about it and use it, like so many things in medicine. I ask them questions about, you know, where are they working? What is it like? 
share common experiences and uh, if I have if I have visited their area of the world and I find it helpful as much from a personal interest standpoint as much as from thinking is that something else I need to add to the book but so the exchanges are different. It's not what they're asking me, but I really want to learn about them.